I think I forgot how to read. When I was a kid, I could read a book in a day. Now, I can barely get through a page. To fix that, I tried to read five books in five days. It's like somebody's just reading to me. I know I should have seen this coming. Am I broken? Let me explain. Thank you to Fabulous for sponsoring a portion of this video. Hey there. So you might be under the impression that I'm some sort of avid reader. Look at how I dress. I hate to brag, but Joe from you might want to murder me. Hello there. But every time I try to read a book for pleasure, I get through about one paragraph before the narcissism kicks in. Am I better than everyone? Am I an intellectual? It just sucks because I used to read a lot, but for some reason I just can't get through them, and I miss that. I miss the feeling of getting lost in a story. So today, in this video, you and I are going to figure out why bookworms stop reading, and hopefully, how to start again. I started my research trying to figure out if anyone else felt this way. After scouring survey data, polls, forums, and articles, I found that not only were prior readers lamenting the loss of the hobby in adulthood or after traumatic incidents, but found that leisure reading as a whole is on the decline. So this decline has been around since like the 1980s, and according to this Dutch survey that took place from the 50s to the 90s, it's been about for longer than that because of TV, I guess. TV goes way up, reading goes marginally down. TV really did kill the the literary star. Gross. Now, some articles are trying to frame this decline as the end of humanity, like, oh no, what if we stop writing things down? I don't think it's that serious. Reading is great. It can train your cognitive ability and it can improve your empathy, but if it makes you miserable, there are other options. Not everyone needs to read for leisure. However, this video is for people who used to enjoy reading and are now wondering why that's in the past tense. So, why? There are probably four reasons why you stopped reading. One, you don't have the time. Generally, the younger you are, the more flexibility you have in your schedule. Once work, errands, and responsibilities become the norm and you don't intentionally account for reading, you'll likely be unable to find the time, at least until you remove something else from your schedule. Two, you don't have the energy. Reading is surprisingly complex since we aren't born with brain circuitry dedicated to it like we do for breathing or moving. When we look at a page, we see shapes. Those shapes are matched to their meaning, combined to form words, connected to our experiences and knowledge, until we eventually extract understanding from the text. This requires a level of concentration that can be difficult to maintain after a long day, or if you're struggling with things linked to focus impairment like mental illness or stress. 3. You don't have the practice. If you haven't read in a while, you might not be used to concentrating for long periods of time or grappling with dense writing. Attempting to tackle a text outside of your current ability could be frustrating and make reading feel impossible compared to shorter or simpler stories that can ease you back into the habit. Finally, 4. You're reading the wrong books. There are three common motives for reading. Evolution, education, and escape. Book subjects usually complement at least one of these motives. So the next time you want to read, ask yourself, why? And make sure the book meets your motive. So those were just a few reasons for why you might have stopped reading. Now, I think they all kind of apply to me in some way. I have this really bad habit of letting work consume everything, so even when I have time for reading, I'm usually just reading for work. Also, to be entirely honest, my fiction reading ability has never really progressed past my Percy Jackson and the Olympians phase. Hold on. Got it. I tried reading adult fiction last year. The complexity and depth of the characters was honestly confusing. Anyway, now that we know our problem, how do we solve it? Well, that means it's time for a garbage experiment with sample size one. Look at this production value. I'm staring straight into it. It's very bright. Here is the question, right? Oh, I need to be in the light. Is it here? There we go. Can I, a former gifted kid who read the entire Aragon book series in four days, now read five books in five days? Hypothesis? No. I know y'all are used to me biting off more than I can chew, but I really don't know if I could do this. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna see how this hypothesis is impacted by the following treatments. Number one, no treatment, it's a control. For day one, I'm just gonna read when I feel like reading. No pressure, no external force, only vibe. Treatment number two, reward! 
hard. If I finish a book on day two, I'm gonna treat myself to a pizza party. Look at this ethnically diverse group of young people having fun with some pizza. That could be me. Treatment number three. Shh. This is the cone of silence day. I'm gonna turn off all my devices. No meetings, no responsibilities, only book. Hopefully, I don't know. Life gets in the way sometimes. Treatment number four, punishment. Huh? You like that? You like that visual gag? I'm not going to be reading Crime and Punishment. Russian literature scares me. I'm going to set reading goals, and then if I fail to meet those reading goals throughout the day, I will need to wall sit. Can you see that? Finally, treatment number five. Audiobooks. So there's this commonly cited 2016 study that found that there was no discernible difference in comprehension between an audiobook and reading a book. However, other studies have found that audiobooks kind of encourage multitasking, which does impair comprehension. Neither of those things matter to me though, because when I hear things, only hear things, don't know where it goes. University lectures were brutal. So anyway, I'm gonna listen to the audiobook while reading the book. So it kind of becomes like captions for the audiobook. Really reverse engineered reading there. Surprise! There's a bonus treatment! So there's this 2021 study that found that gamification can improve people's reading outcomes based on certain circumstances that I think apply to me. Look, a citation. Anyway, this whole experiment kind of qualifies as gamification uh, in the sense that the reward is clout. Like, comment, subscribe. Now you might be wondering, what books? I'm a strong believer in trying out books and giving up on them if they're not enjoyable. Except when you're doing a five books in five days challenge. So I'm going to be picking books of reasonable length that come to me highly recommended. I will reveal them at the beginning of each day, encouraging you all to keep watching this video. Really lost the energy at some point in this presentation. All right, I think that's everything. Let's go to day one. Okay, so it is 9.47 on day one, and we are reading Mutual Aid by Dean Spade. I've been awake for a while. I had every intent on waking up early and getting an hour of reading in, except I started answering emails, and then it was now. Anyway, during the past few years, I've been feeling really helpless and disillusioned, but I'm kind of tired of wallowing, so I wanted to start educating myself on how to actually do something. Let's start reading. I'm a bit of a waste through the book now. It's a fast read, but yeah, it's good. I'm not a book reviewer. I do find myself pausing a lot while reading and just thinking, I'm reading. But yeah, it doesn't look like I have too much more work to do today, so hopefully I'll get a good few hours in to, to get through this. Well, I was wrong. Almost immediately after I said that, I started to do work and didn't stop until the evening. It happened again. I finished lunch and I thought that, hey, I'll get some reading done after lunch. Um, then I opened my emails. I need to read. <laughs> Eventually though, my inbox slowed down. I shut off my computer and let's read. The book was small enough that I could just power through. I feel like such an adult. Oh shoot. And eventually. Done. Good book. It took me about four hours to get through that, which was difficult to find in a work day. I don't feel like an extreme sense of achievement. Finishing a nonfiction book is kind of just like, I've done my homework now. But tomorrow I'm reading fiction. So maybe things will be different. It is 8.42 on day two, and today we are reading Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency by Douglas Adams. Uh, this is a copy I received from a friend who found it in a used bookstore because I kept saying, I can't find it anywhere. So she mailed it to me with fun decorations years ago, and then I never read it because I'm a good friend. The treatment for the day is the reward system, so if I can finish this, I'm gonna throw myself a pizza party. I will say, I kind of cheated, because I picked it up last night and <laughs> got a good chunk of the way through the book. My first meeting of the day is in 15 minutes, so that's 15 minutes of reading time. Let's do this. Hello. How are you? So I finished most of my morning calls. Um, why did I think that I could read five books in five days while also just working every day? This was a bad idea. <laughs> you know what's better than reading legal agreements? Reading book. Finished my morning work. I'm making lunch. Is it a good thing that the only times I seem to be able to find myself able to read during the day is when I need to eat as well. I don't know. I'm not here to critically analyze my own life. I'm here to read a book. I know I should have seen this coming. Why did I think that work would just be able to vanish? 
suddenly because I needed to read now. I have to eat, but then after that, I have the rest of the day to read, I think. At the start of the day, I was like, oh, who really needs a pizza party? But now it's the principle of the thing. And now I kind of, I'm driven now. The pizza party is not obviously happening today. I need to finish the day. And then I might have a pizza party tomorrow. If I finish this book, Ah! It is 5.33, I just wrapped up my work day, and I got basically no reading done throughout it. Maybe like three pages over lunch. I spent way too much time on TikTok. It's 7.34. <laughs> Still got this much book left. <laughs> it's been a while since I read fiction, so it was tricky to get started. I found myself easily distracted by my phone or my cat. But as I got deeper into the book, the world around me started to fall away, and I was in Douglas Adams' absurd little fantasy. By the time I finished, four hours had passed, and I hadn't looked at my phone once. It is 11.19pm. I am done. This book really waits until the last 10 pages to make sense. <laughs> but it's good! It's whack, but it's good. Um, Pizza? All right, so it's day three. I have cleared out my inbox. I don't have anything really pressing to do today. So I'm going to be trying to read Moonwalking with Einstein by Joshua Foer today in a cone of silence. So that means no phone, no watch, no computer, no laptop, no tablet. I have a screen time problem. I think that the idea of not using my phone all day is stressing me out more than trying to read this book. Well, let's do it. As a decent nonfiction reader with a bunch of free time, I expected this day to be the easiest. It wasn't. It's a good book, I'm 30 pages in, but I wanna use my phone. I miss my phone, I have a problem. But is it a problem if I don't really wanna solve it? Ugh. The change in routine threw me off and I found myself wanting to use my phone, if only because I wasn't allowed to. I tried to isolate myself in bed, but immediately fell asleep. I think I was just craving some sort of distraction so I didn't have to read and only read. I broke the cone of silence. I did about 10 minutes of work and now I'm gonna go back to reading. And I haven't been more excited to read than this moment today. Am I broken? As a last ditch effort, I started pacing and it worked. It is 8.30 p.m. I am seven hours and 200 pages into this book. I wish that I was doing literally anything else. It's a good book. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's a good book. It's just, it's all I've been doing today. I'm done. Yeah, I really got into the zone there at the end. I just paced this one hallway for two hours and done. I finished the book. Got a little weird there at the end. That's three books in three days. Okay, I'm tired and I want to use my phone now. Bye. All right, so it is day four and it is way later than it should be. Today, we are going to desperately try and read Why Fish Don't Exist by Lulu Miller. Really looking forward to this one. It's just that I woke up late, I got up late, I had a call this morning. Tried to read during that call. She's reading during our life update. Do you read it? But I this book is neatly divided into 10 sections of approximately equal length. I'm supposed to be about this far in at this point. I'm this far in. I'm, I'm no far in. And I'm really bummed about that because it is exercise day, which means that before I even open the book, I need to do a wall sit until I can't stand. Let's do that. While thanking Fabulous for sponsoring this portion of the video. I'm already struggling. Fabulous is an app to help you build healthy habits that stick. I'm always a little wary of services like this, but what I like about Fabulous is that it actively encourages you to go at your own pace. Like when New Year's comes around, it can be really tempting to make radical life shifts, like reading five books in five days and then doing a wall sit because you slept in because you burnt out. But there's no shortcut to changing habits. It's all about making little habits stick and that's made easier with Fabulous. We gotta cut to a different shot because my legs are getting out. Whether you're looking to take a journey with step-by-step -step programming to build a foundation, or you just need short-term challenges to motivate yourself and keep you focused, Fabulous bases their approach on behavioral science to make it work for you and me and Taha, who was very proud to finally maintain a routine and wanted me to share this with you. So start building your ideal daily routine today. The first 500 people who click the link in the description will get 25% off a fabulous subscription. It unlocks all the journeys and exercises on the app, 
and backs up and restores your progress if anything goes wrong. Like my legs! <laughs> Click that link! <laughs> Nailed it. Alright, with those wall sits out of the way, it is currently 5 p.m. and I need to start this book. Originally it was split into 10 parts that I could read every hour. There are no longer enough hours in the day, so I reduced the number of parts. I'm in the hallway that solved all of my problems yesterday. I'm gonna pace and read and hope for the best. I never want to do another wall sit again. I made it through this day by just pure drive and power. I didn't want to subject myself to more wall sits, and I didn't want to subject you all to me being pathetically out of shape on the internet. It didn't hurt that the book was also very good. Done! My cat is walking in the background. I can't believe I did it, but I finished this book in like four hours. One, great, no wall sits. Two, good book! If you like answer in progress videos, you'll like this. Four books in four days? Who am I? Let's go! <laughs> So it is the last day. Today we are reading an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. You might notice that this is a, an advanced reader copy, and that's because Hank was kind enough to send me a copy before this book was released in September 2018. He has since written and published the sequel. There's even a lovely little inscription that goes, I hope if you have time, you read this. I have time! Four years and a global pandemic later. <laughs> I'll be listening to the audiobook while looking at the pages. Uh, does it count as reading if I'm doing this? I just rented the audiobook on Libby. If your local library is on Libby, use Libby. It's fantastic. Anyway, let's get reading. So I'm about an hour into the book now, and it's getting good. And the way I can tell, besides the obvious, is the fact that my eyes and my ears sometimes disconnect. Like, I find myself reading ahead of the audiobook and then getting confused. Like, I swear I just heard that. I get deja vu. So now, I've just started to increase the pace of the audiobook. So now I'm at 1.85 times speed. Might go even faster, who knows? It's a good book! I should really get into book reviews. Every day. Good book. That's all I can say. <laughs> I just realized that today and day three are weirdly similar. I don't have that many meetings, I don't have that much work, and I'm able to dedicate just a lot of the day to reading. On day three though, it was forced. Like, I still had work to do. It was the middle of the week. Emails are being sent. But today, it's a Friday, there's not too much going on. And I think it just makes me realize that Part of the reason I was so messed up on day three was the fact that I still have a life outside of reading. And it's pretty hard to escape into a book when you are vividly aware that that life is still going on. Just something to think about. I don't know. Back to this bitch. It has been a very long time since I felt anything while reading, but. Done. I did it. I read five books in five days. My usual review, good book. Great book, glad I took so long to read it because the sequel's already out and Hank, you left us on a cliffhanger with this one. The past four days, I felt like this unique cognitive strain that comes with reading, where it pulls you in and asks a lot more of you, versus today's experience, which I can only describe as me binge watching a miniseries. <laughs> like, that's what it felt like. I still felt immersed in the story, I still consumed this narrative, had a great time, flipped through pages. Wouldn't quite call it reading felt different. I thought that this week was gonna be a slog, I thought that it was gonna be brutal and full of failure, but instead, I just had a great time. Anyway, for now, I'm just gonna relax, because I read five books in five days. Who is she? All right, so it's been a few days since I wrapped up the challenge, and my gobs are still smacked. I did not expect to be able to do that, but I did it. I read these five books in five days. And you can too. If you wanna get into the date of it all, I did time track reading each book and made this graphic. Wow, is that data visualization? Anyway, using that and this whole experience, I've created a conveniently numbered list for how to read more. Number one. Narratives read fast. There were three books on my list with a range of narrative involvement. None, some, honestly reads like fiction that just happens to be true. And even though I read them under separate treatments, I felt like the more narrative, the more immersive, and the less likely I was to get distracted. So narratives, 
good. Number two, audiobooks read faster, a lot faster. This was my second fastest book. This was my fastest book. However, a lot of that speed came because I had a visual aid. I don't think that I would have been able to read the book as quickly if I was just listening to the audiobook alone. On the few occasions that I looked away from the book and started multitasking, I found that I needed to rewind after a few minutes when I realized I had no idea what was going on. Number three, challenges work. Kind of in agreement with that gamification study I mentioned earlier, challenges in games can create this short-term motivation to keep you going while you're trying to relearn your long-term internal motivation, like why you like reading, why you want to keep reading. Finally, number four, Except that reading is slow. If you only care about extracting data, there are faster ways. There are digitized documents with Control F, optimized internet searches, podcasts played back at two times speed. But reading for reading's sake is glacial. And at the start of the week, I kind of hated that. I found that frustrating. But now, I realize that the bug is a feature. In order to read, I need to take time for myself as a person outside of work. I need to disconnect from distractions. I need to be physically present. When I started this video, I mentioned that I missed the feeling of reading as an escape. I think I lost that because escaping has gotten a lot harder. Work and responsibilities and stress can take up so much of you that there isn't enough time or energy to be yourself. Unfortunately, you can't life hack your way around that. You can't add more hours to your day. I think that's why I liked reading. I needed to safeguard that time and that time was used exclusively for me. And that was incredible. So if you wanna read more, I encourage you to not only establish the temporal boundaries, setting that time aside, but also the mental permission to be yourself, to take that time for you to read. But yeah. That's what I took away from this week. I hope you liked it. If you did, maybe share it with a friend who you think might also enjoy it. Promotion, call to engage. All right, I'm gonna go read now. Bye.